everyone, and welcome to tonight's Will Talk with Artists. My name is Martha Campbell, and I am MFA's Communications Manager. Our digital discussion tonight is with abstract painter Christine Zmuda. Christine is a passionate painter who uses her craft to explore the intersection of art and music. On top of her art, Christine is also a technology executive at Microsoft. Her fast-paced, diverse life adds to the strong emotions of her work. I would also like to introduce the host of our show, Will Scott. Will is an art historian with an extensive career as a photographer and the former head of adult programs for the National Gallery of Art. He is uniquely qualified to help bridge the gap between artists and the public, and he'll be our guide into the art world tonight. Thank you, Martha, for that nice introduction and for your ongoing uh, excellent support of our programming. And Christine, uh, thank uh, you for agreeing to subject yourself to this. Uh, I hope it'll be fun. Most of the uh, interviewees say it is. And I'm really excited about uh, talking with you tonight because I think your art is uh, very broad in its scope and varied in the things that you do and the way that you do them. Uh, and since you're a relatively new member of our MFA organization, I've not seen a lot of your work or had a chance to talk to you. So I hope it'll be a, an opportunity for everybody uh, this evening to get to know you better. Um, having said that, those that have been following the program for a while know that there's a, a sort of a loose format that I follow, uh, getting to know the artist and their background and how they came to um, uh, be creative artists. But tonight I want to flip that just a little bit and start immediately with one of uh, Christine's works uh, and just pose one question to her and then let her tell us a little bit about how she created it and, and why and what uh, she hopes to share through her art, at least in this one example. So Martha, if you wanna put that first image. Okay, and I think this is, um, as I said a moment ago, and we'll discover Christine's work is quite varied. Uh, this one resonated with me because I am a, a historian of American art. And when you show so boldly the word love, I couldn't help but think of Robert Indiana. I think all of you who are uh, tuning in right now know the work, the very famous work, um, now part of our popular culture. So Christine, you can take this any way you want to. Talk mm -hmm. about your connection between your painting and music. Uh, or just dive right in to what the message is here, which on your website, I think is one that is very much, from what you said, very much needed at this particular time in our history. So share with us what you were trying to accomplish here. Sure, sure. And thanks so much for having me today. So. Uh, I guess a little bit about my my process and, and background. Uh, I will bring my basically mood life experiences to the studio and I'll typically start with music first. How am I feeling? What comes forward? And a lot of my work is is very intuitive. I rarely start with sketches. I rarely start with really even preformed ideas. But at the time of this particular painting, I did feel like there was this great polarization of America. Uh, I did feel like there was um, a need for anyone who has a platform to bring people together. Uh, this one was particularly around, you know, trying to show a message of hope, of positivity, of um, uh, of, of really an opportunity for anyone, regardless of your platform, if you are an artist, if you are um, in the business world, if you have the opportunity to make a difference, show love. And that's really what came forward in this particular piece. So is this something that you did very recently within say the last 12 months? Yes, yes. Um, this one, this one was actually selected. I have to get the time exactly right. It would have been shown at um, a gallery in Paris. So they, they also selected it, one of four pieces that was shown there. 
And that exhibition actually started, it was supposed to be in August, but with COVID it got pushed. So it was there from December, January, February. So it was created around the summertime. Yeah, okay. Uh, and did the, um, did you know what was gonna be in Paris when you created it? No, okay. absolutely not, no. <laughs> Then let's jump right to the palette. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's dominated by red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of fortuitous if one of the first places uh, it was shown was Paris because their national colors are red, white, and blue like ours. Yes. Did that, was that in any way a conscious decision that related to the theme of the uh, work as you've described it, the, the purpose. Uh, it, it, it was as I started and it, to, be, to be honest, I didn't know what words were going to be there at all. I, I was just starting with the background and, and playing with it and I needed something at the end. I, I just thought, well, it would be interesting to have a message here now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what would that message be? And that's when I was thinking um, it would be very, you know, positive yeah. show, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, j j just be a, be a nice example for people to-, to Well, that's even more, I think, to. interesting that you started as you normally do with your work with the shapes mm -hmm. and colors. Uh, now you've emphasized uh, in our conversation uh, the other day and on your website, the importance of music and you even in your uh, brief introductory remarks you said something about that mm -hmm. was there a particular uh song or a piece of music that you were listening to that helped you get started with this one because it sounds like it could have just existed on its own without that musical connection yeah this one you know to be honest it doesn't come right to me at this moment. I usually document them pretty well and I'm kind of looking at my catalog here to see if I reference the song on this particular one, um, but it's not coming to mind at this point. Yeah, I'd have to go back through my Instagram feed because I, I do do a pretty good job of identifying at, at what point and, and, and why is, is the painting named the way it was. Usually a lyric from a song or... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, phrase, well, yeah. and some of your titles are directly related mm -hmm. to the songs, particularly of certain groups. And I want to talk about that uh, a little later. But uh, I think this is uh, a nice way for us to start uh, by sharing one of your, uh, I think, very compelling images and talking a little bit about the process. But since it's different uh, mm -hmm. from the way that many of your works are created, maybe this is the place to step back a little and share with our listeners and viewers the interesting way in which you became a painter because it's very unusual and considering the quality of your work i think it's even more shocking almost shocking so you want to tell your your personal history in that regard a little bit Sure, sure. Um, it's, it is a little bit unconventional. And I always like to explore different ways to learn different ways to just enjoy life. And that's what I was doing at this time. I was with a, a bunch of my friends and we were doing a wine and paint party. And I found that I was really drawn to color. I was really drawn to just the whole process. And I quickly lost pace with where the instructor was and what they were telling <laughs> us to do. And my painting turned out quite different than others, but I, I, I really enjoyed it and really liked yeah. it. So then um, realized, well, maybe this is something I like to do more of and just explored a lot of uh, opportunities to learn both online. Uh, and I think I mentioned to you yesterday that I took one, one class um, actually, after I had painted quite a few pieces and um, that instructor helped just reinforce that I have some great natural instincts on comp composition. She helped me think more about color and um, she also taught me more about just freedom. I, I like to start, even when I was starting out on big pieces, I just yeah. liked like, yeah. you know, being very expressive and she encouraged me to keep that. Yeah. Well, I think that um, 
that right there is interesting that you started through a wine and paint party. Uh, my daughter-in-law has done a couple of those and she really enjoys them, but mm -hmm. uh, she has not turned into a painter. <laughs> uh, and most people don't. But the thing that struck me with my uh, academic and museum background is how many lessons did you have with this painter and what was the circumstance of your first class? Yes, yeah. So I had four full lessons and they were, I think, two hours in length. And I, I showed up, they encouraged us to bring a couple pieces so they sort of knew where you were in your process and expected the class to be six to eight people. And it was a class of one. Yeah. And the instructor said, are you comfortable with this? And I, I have to admit, it, at that time, I was pretty intimidated. And I didn't know what to expect. I said, well, of course, let's give it a go. And she was super generous. Um, and again, I think she was the right teacher for me because she was all about making sure you maintain some of your style, that you didn't imitate someone else, that you you know could learn and, and, and still have that work really represent you and how you wanted to express yourself. Well, I think you were very fortunate to find that uh, teacher with that attitude, and mm -hmm. I'll give it the uh, art historian stamp of, um, I don't know, approval, if you will, uh, because part of my dissertation and academic studies were of teachers associated with one of America's oldest art schools, and most of them created little clones of themselves. Mm -hmm. But the one that's remembered as one of the great teachers in the history of American art always wanted the artist to find themselves and saw himself as only someone who gave them the tools to do that. And yeah. so that's not universal, never was, never will be. And I think you really, um, you obviously, from what you've done, found the right teacher for yes. what you are. Who you yes, and, and I would encourage anyone who is interested in taking classes. Her name is uh, Gita Mirashashi, and she teaches at Glen Echo, and she's wonderful. So maybe there she you go. <laughs> okay, for all of our listeners, if you want to follow mm -hmm. that path. Okay, let's move along then to uh, another, uh, the next image, Martha. Okay, now this one I I quite like. I, I like this kind of. Uh, a more um, uh, less complex composition. I like your color palette, but I'm having a lot of difficulty reading it like an art historian. I can give you a personal, you know, subjective response, of course. But w was there a piece of music that inspired this, or is connected to it? Yeah, this is a uh, Marvin Gaye, and. This is an example of actually my, my work experience, life experiences coming through in a painting. And behind this painting, there's lots of layers and I was painting over something. And the first uh, figure, which to me is a, is a feather came forward and I just really wanted to keep it. We've been having a lot of conversations at Microsoft about racial, um, equality and inequality and it was right after the George Floyd murder and I had um, a lot of hope based on the conversations that were happening in corporate America and the openness and the, the feeling that we're, we're actually going to make significant changes in, in helping to level the playing field, help people get equality. So the first figure was um, you know representing the Native American um, you know plight. Second one was African slavery. The third one was the bridge on Selma. The fourth being um, George Floyd's murder. But you'll see also that there's some nuances in the painting. Like I, I tried to do blue for hope, like blue being like more hope. And then um, behind the figures, you know, no one really standing up for American Indians. Um, the African uh, uh, folks kind of walking together. And then um, the same with the Selma situation. But George Floyd was the first one that I felt like, wow, we're mm -hmm. really going to move the dial. And there's people yeah. moving forward with the, with the movement. Yeah. Uh, well, that's fascinating. And I don't think I would have been able to read that at all on my own. Not that that 
it makes any difference at all to the success of your work, obviously, or the, the uh, beauty of your work. But it gives me, it makes me want to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. I did not know until within the last month I was listening to an NPR program talking about uh, how uh, the art can affect social change. And that Marvin Gaye, whose work I love, uh, actually a lot of his songs, particularly the ones, some of the ones he wrote himself, are about that, about the struggle of African Americans. And so the way you're responding suggests to me or, uh, that you knew that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely did. Yeah. And, and a change is going to come is, was, was a place that song in particular, he had to step out of his comfort zone yeah. mm -hmm. and do something very, very different. And that became, you know, the anthem of, yeah. of the civil rights movement. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing, uh, are you familiar with uh, Vasily Kandinsky's concerning the spiritual in art? I'm not. No. Uh, not at all, or you just don't don't know much about it. I, I know Kandinsky, but I don't know that particular piece of work. Okay, well, now we're going to dig into what I think is really fascinating from my perspective about your art, other than its uh, compelling um, visual uh, strength, and that is Kandinsky. Uh, was not only a great and early abstract painter, uh, but he also uh, was highly educated and highly intelligent. He wrote an essay uh, that's been cited over and over again in art historical uh, writings, and that is uh, he wrote in Concerning the Spiritual uh, in Art, which was published around 1913, that different colors and shapes consistently moved people uh, with certain emotions. Mm. Uh, and so you mentioned blue and the significance of blue. Is this in a personal association between a color and an emotion or is there something that you've read or been exposed to that connects specific colors with specific emotions? It's definitely personal and it's definitely what I feel. Okay. Yeah. Now that gets me to uh, what I think is possibly even more fascinating and surprising. Are you familiar with the uh, term synesthesia? Yes, I am. Yeah. Now, okay, here's the loaded question, <laughs> the $64,000 question. When you look at, say, a landscape, mm -hmm. do you hear music or see colors other than the colors of nature before you? No, it's actually the reverse for me. I listen to music and then I see shapes. I see things. I feel color. Well, that's synesthesia. Synesthesia actually works both ways. Oh, okay. uh, and, and the idea uh, is that certain people, very few people, but when they hear music, they see color. When they see color, they hear music. It's mostly... Uh, the documented cases of people that um, have this ability, it's almost always between those two arts. But sometimes I've read something about people having touched things mm -hmm. and they hear music or see colors based on their sense of touch. So how frequently do you have that experience? Pretty, pretty frequently. I mean, when I'm painting and I'll go into the zone of just shutting everything else off, it's, it's fairly frequent. I would say, yeah, yeah at least, uh, yeah, at least like once or twice a week. It's very yeah. much like that. Yeah. I think I've had the experience once, maybe shortly after I read concerning the spiritual in art. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the people that I know, like yourself, that I've met that have this experience, it seems to be something that is important and, and moving mm -hmm. to them. Uh, so uh, you're very lucky, I think. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the next image, but keep with this topic just for another minute. Okay. Yes. It, what's, it, I mean, this looks like something, and, and I'm just winging it here with you. Mm -hmm. I what we just talked about in this idea of synesthesia mm -hmm. seems very much at work here, is it? Yes, yes. 
So, so this one, the, the musical reference is REM and it's music that I came up with through college, but it was mm -hmm. even a more important song that my father and I uh, listened to, danced to, and he's no longer with me, uh, no longer with us. And um, yeah, so, I, you know, it's, it's bringing forth happiness is the light blue that I feel. It's also bringing through, you know, sadness because he's not at my side, um, but uh, just, you know, it just sometimes music, and I, I know a lot of people can feel this way. You hear a song, it takes you back to that moment. You hear a song, it gives you goosebumps. And that's some of the power behind my connection with music. Well, I, you know, that's part of what I was reading is those pale blues and the whites, you know, seem like such uh, soft, gentle and pleasing colors, but your mm -hmm. use of the darker colors and the boldness of the brush strokes struck that other note. So mm -hmm. obviously I couldn't have articulated it in the way of your personal experience that went uh, or stands behind this, but I certainly felt that mood that you just described. Um, do you use your brush strokes in that way that we should pay attention to how broad they are, how thick they yeah. are? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, some moods and experiences are just very calm and you'll, you won't see that kind of, you know, heaviness. Yeah. yeah. So they are, they are varied. Well, th this is fascinating to talk about your, your, the variety in your work. So let's uh, go ahead and look at a, another one, Martha. Um, this, are these flowers? Was this inspired by flowers? It was not directly inspired by flowers. Um, again, I took some of the shapes back and, and added more, um, you know, more paint gray to the, the background. This one was also shown in Paris. This is inspired by the music of um, Chardet. <laughs> uh -huh. So it's uh, another kind of like lighter, um, fun. And when I, I paint, I often turn my canvas constantly, constantly, oh, constantly. Okay. So this probably looks like something even different um, before I took back and, and added that negative space. You know, I love Chardet's uh, music. Do you think that her work sounds too similar across the years, though? That would be my one reservation. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, she definitely has a, a certain a certain vibe for sure. It's just a tragedy that she doesn't record anymore. She's yeah. such a talent. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, so that's certainly something we have in common. But mm -hmm. um, is it fair to say in this example that the colors and the brush strokes and the title all together make your 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 theme here pretty clear? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Unlike the other one that we talked about, I think I could read this just by seeing it on the wall and responding to the shapes and the colors and the, and the title would give me enough. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. And this one, I mean, like you said, it wasn't inspired by flowers. Like I didn't see flowers and paint them, but it sort of became that as, as I took things away. Um, the flower paintings that you have on your website, mm -hmm. to me, seem they're different than this one, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Uh, and they seem much different from the rest of your work. Is there some reason for that or am I just kind of not seeing a big enough sample? No, I, I think so. I mean, there is, there's uh, some of the smaller ones I do, uh, I do in the theme of my grandmother. So those all kind of look the same. And then um, some of the other ones have different colors. To, and I think one of them you're going to show here, Sweet Child of Mine, eventually. And that's uh, inspired by more classic rock and doesn't. Martha, really can we flip to that one wherever it is? In the... Yep, that's it. Oh, okay. That's so, it. Well, Tell us a little bit about that. This I would not have recognized as flowers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it could be flowers. It could be balloons. Like I said, remember I'm I'm turning the yeah. the, the, the paintings all the time. Again, I added negative space at the at the top. Um, this particular one, this I painted right as the pandemic was hitting, and we were all in lockdown. I think it was like February, or March, and. I felt like I needed to return back to normalcy before 
you know, the world was changing. Yeah. Yes. yes. And it, this took me back to just like classic rock. And I listened to a lot of classic rock during that time because I felt that was a safe space. It was before 9 11. It was before like a lot of things that dramatically changed how life was impacting people my age. And it was a safe, safe space. So you mentioned classic rock. Yeah. Uh, that's a kind of broad term. And I don't know if you'll consider the group that I'm getting at um, classic rock or something else. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite group from the 60s? Uh, Rolling Stones by far. Well, I I'm shocked because I thought I was skimming through your uh, work on your site and saw a number of Beatles references. That is true. I, I recently did a collection called Beatles One, celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Beatles. And I tried to do something a little bit different, you know, always trying to grow as an artist. And rather than just bringing my mood, I thought I'd try just this collection and see what happened and listen to the same type of music yeah. and, and see what the outcome was. Well, it, it made a cohesive body. I mean, I think it's a little more figurative and a little more uh, mm -hmm. literal than some of your uh, more abstract works like this one. Well, uh, Martha, what else do we have uh, racked up then to look at? I mean, this isn't like any of the others that we've seen so far. Why is that? And it is a Beatles title. It is. So um, this one has a bit of life experience in it as well. The format of just putting shapes and that was just like naturally occurring, naturally happening. The, the loopiness was like the eight days a week. It was kind of like an eight, but it really wasn't. It was just kind of, you know, an abstracted eight. And, you know, we'd had some, you know, terrible family news, which is the black part. Mm -hmm. um, and was just, you know, angry that day and upset. But mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. as we continued to work on on the painting, wanted to bring back some hope with the with the pink across mm -hmm. it, but didn't want to forget it. So it was like eight days a week, you're struggling, you know, getting yeah. through life, um, taking the best of it. And that's really what was well, the I, meaning behind that. Of this, the small sample of your work that I had been able to see, your use of line uh, here and the gestural quality of that line, I think is very interesting. Is this something that's relatively new to you? And if it is, is it something you think you'll continue to explore? I have done a, a good amount of line work before. So I think you probably just don't see those on my website. I do enjoy it. So I think you will see more of it. I don't know that it's super new. I think I've always kind of had it. Well, I, I encourage its use. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, how many more images do we have up, Martha? Well, I think the last one's kind of fun. It's, it's again, just playing with okay. shapes. Sometimes things emerge. Um, this is where I, I got my history wrong with the Beatles. So I could have probably used a, a good historian. But I was thinking back to, you know, growing up and seeing some of the, the footage of the Beatles. And I remembered, I wrongly remembered that they met the Dalai Lama, but they'd actually met the uh, Maharishi. Yeah. Which, which really influenced their, their message. And I was just making it a little playful, kind of literal llama that yeah. came forward and called it the Dalai Lama. <laughs> well, that's, uh, <laughs> that really threw me because I did see this on your site and I'm, you know, I just couldn't put that together in my head. So that's right. kind of interesting. And um, I don't know, I don't know what to say. It's a, it's a very interesting painting, but I don't know what to say about that dissonance. It may not even be important because uh, mm -hmm. I think your work does stand alone, uh, you know, on its own. And so it's not a big deal, but let's go back because I can't resist asking you about Claire de Lune. Mm -hmm. And my question is, this is a very, this is a strong, geometric, and colorful painting. And I don't associate that with Claire de Lune in my own mind. Mm -hmm. So since that's an important connection, the title, the music, the image, yes. can you help me wrap my head around that? 
Yes, yeah, I, I certainly can. So this was in tribute to my sister-in-law who was battling cancer and part of that came through in, in another painting. And this is a very accomplished woman. She was very structured. Um, she actually, I noticed nearby, you went to Dickinson. She graduated in uh, set, the class of 77 from Dickinson was a- Much younger than me. <laughs> and she was uh, on the board of directors, accomplished mom, accomplished um, uh, banking exec. The board and, of trustees, you mean, of Dickinson? Yes. What's yes. her name? Uh, Roberta Greenspan. She's your sister-in-law? Yes. I hope she's well. Yeah, it's, it wasn't a happy, it wasn't a happy ending, unfortunately. Yeah. So we did, we did lose her. Um, I did not her. know that. She and yeah. I were on the alumni council together for many years. And yes. uh, that's, I'm really sad to find that out. She was a wonderful person. Totally, totally, totally. She and just accomplishing everything she did. Yeah. And third Loon was a, a song that she would play on the piano. And wow. I just felt like I was, you know, yeah. yeah. thinking of her in a tribute and yeah, just a fascinating, amazing woman. Wow, that's uh, talk about small world. Yeah, well, there's a small world. That for me at least, that's a very sort of heavy way to end this, but that's not that's neither here nor there for our listeners. Um, mm -hmm. So since this is the last image that we have uh, selected to talk about, maybe we could open it up for uh, Q&A and I can sort of gather my thoughts. Yeah. Okay, I see a hand this up. Is, this is Susan Engel, I have a question. How typically long, uh, does it take you to do a painting? Do you do it in one sitting? Do you many sittings, hours? It, it's, it's many sittings, but I'm also working on, you know, five or six usually at a time. Okay. So I'll come back to them. And I think like a lot of artists, I'll, I'll hang them for a while on my wall before I think that they're done and look at them and, you know, continue to iterate until I'm really happy with them. How do you know when you think you're finished, when a painting's finished? It speaks to me. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm really happy with it. I'm not picky about some piece of it. I just feel like it all comes together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question, Susan. Well, if the, <laughs> this will be shocking if I'm going to end the program now after only 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one more question. Do you always paint in your studio or do you ever paint plein air? I have um, painted plein air. I've taken some work, well, a couple places, but um, local to me, I've taken my work to the sunflower fields that uh, are out in Poolsville. I live in Potomac, Maryland. Nice. And yeah, yeah, and I've also um, taken some work to the South Carolina beaches where we vacation because I can't not paint when I'm away <laughs> too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I do think that uh, we've had a very lively and uh, a full discussion, even though it's rather brief uh, compared to some of the times that Martha will remember me dragging it out. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, you've been a wonderful guest. Uh, very uh, clear in uh, talking about your work. And I think it's very dynamic and uh, very, very strong work. So I'm glad you've joined our organization. And I hope we'll see more of you and of uh, your work. So anyway, again, Christine, thank you. Thanks all of you for listening in and participating tonight. And Martha, thank you for your help. And uh, good night. Thanks so much.